In today's video, I'm going to be trying out this chat GPT AI, which everyone keeps talking about. I haven't used it yet because it kind of scares me. So let's get started by testing it out for the first time. So first up, I asked it to give me a good reason to ask you to subscribe. It said Smallish Beans is a popular family friendly YouTuber who creates engaging and entertaining content that appeals to a wide range of audiences from his hilarious and entertaining Minecraft gameplay to his heartwarming vlogs and family videos. Not sure what they are. Smallish Beans provides a variety of content that is both enjoyable and suitable for all ages. If you're looking for a YouTube channel that offers wholesome entertainment and a positive message, subscribe to Smallish Beans is definitely worth considering. Well guys, if that isn't enough for you, I don't know what will be. Subscribe for more family vlogs. <laughs> now, I messed around a bit and asked it a few questions like, what should I build? What size of building I should build, etc. And each time it came back saying, oh, it, what you should build in Minecraft depends on your personal preference. Blah, 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 blah. What the heck is the point in you, AI? You're here to make my easy job as a YouTuber even easier. So I tried a different tack. I asked it what the majority of people consider the most aesthetically pleasing. It gave me another very unspecific answer. So I decided to ask what type of Minecraft building is the most searched on YouTube? I need to get them views. It said as of September 2021, the most searched type of Minecraft building on YouTube was Minecraft Survival House. Okay, so we're kind of getting somewhere now. A survival house, but survival houses can come in many shapes shapes and sizes. I want specifics, you silly robot. I asked it what is the most used block in these houses, and it said really boring blocks like wooden planks, cobblestone, stone bricks, etc. In hindsight, I realized that is kind of a dumb question, which I already knew the answer to, so this isn't being very helpful so far. So let's try another tactic and first figure out where to build. And it started listing off a load of different biomes and why they are good for building in. Interesting, but I want it to choose one for me. And it said, sure, if you had to choose one biome that is well suited for creative build, I would recommend the plains biome. Wow. How original. So anyway, I loaded up Minecraft and I made a new world, searched for a plains biome and found this. It's uh, tiny and hideous. So I looked again and found this. What on earth? These are probably the two worst plains biomes I've ever seen. So I deleted that world, made a brand new one with the seed AI sucks lol and loaded that up. I teleported to the nearest plains biome, well, underneath it, but above was something that looked kind of decent. So let's talk about block palettes again. This time I asked about different types of block palettes and it listed me a load. Had medieval, modern, fantasy, never underwater and it told me like different types of blocks to use in those as well. So I asked it to pick one for me and it chose fantasy and it listed me a block palette of quartz, chisel stone bricks and colorful stained glass, which honestly, is just horrible on its own so i'm gonna add a few to try and improve it and here we go yes i i got a bit carried away but all right we have our blocks maybe the ai can help me with how many floors to build once again it came back with the oh everybody's special and different in their own ways i don't care pick me a random number of floors and it chose three floors okay a good amount what about our windows? Once again, personal preference, this personal preference, that. Just give me an answer. So I asked, is two block high windows better for fantasy? And it actually gave me an answer saying that, yes, it can make it feel more magical. And it said they can also provide a larger opening for natural light and views of the surrounding landscape, which can be important if you are building a structure in a beautiful or exotic location. Oh yeah, like the planes biome you chose for me. Good one. Okay, but we decided to go on two windows in the end. But then I decided to ask it the most important question. Do I really have to decorate the interior? And it came back saying it is optional but it can greatly enhance the appearance blah 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 which is true so i guess we're doing that but we need a bit more before we can start building so what type of roof is best for this fantasy house and it gave me a few different types of roofs and once again i got it to choose for me and it chose pointed roof i was kind of hoping for curved as i think they look kind of good but we're gonna go with the pointed as i trust technology so i think i have a thing i need to get started for now i might ask the ai some more questions later but before we start how about a bit of encouragement from the ai and it said dear smallish beans you are a talented and creative minecraft player and your building skills are truly impressive oh they know just what to say. I encourage you to keep pushing your limits and exploring new ideas in your builds. Thank you. 
I've no doubt that you can create a beautiful and functional house that would be a true testament to your creativity and hard work. Keep up the great work and have fun building. Kind of feels like a lot of pressure, but sure, let's get started. So I'm thinking just here would be a nice place to have it, but we have to flatten this out a bit first, which is made easy with some world edit and a little bit of extra terraforming, but fantasy, eh? Not my usual style, I don't think. So of course we took to Google and I wasn't seeing many with pointy roofs, so I'm gonna have to try and be creative here. But forgetting the pointy roofs for now, we got working on the layout of this thing. And as you can see, it's not huge, but we did start building up the sides, trying to get those three floors in. The third floor is definitely gonna be in the roof though. And after that, we got building some of the actual structure itself. Doing a bit of detailing here, but around the front where we're placing all this diorite around, not so much, just the stone texturing for now. I know what you're thinking though. Do I think this looks dumb? I know this looks completely dumb right now, but we'll get to the good stuff in a little bit, I promise. As you can see, we've started some like sort of gradients over here, although I'm just kind of messing around rather than gradienting, in, to be honest. The diorite I know looks awful, but don't worry, we will fix that shortly. But now I want to get the roof out of the way because the roof is always just the most awkward part I find of builds. So let's get it done early and hope it looks good. And this is our roof palette here in case you didn't get it from the dark prismarine up there. We started off by placing all of our blocks we're using for the gradient on the roof. And then I sort of merged them together a bit more. I also finished off the chimney, then added in some prismarine and some yellow terracotta. And finally, a tower in the center with a gold roof. There we go. The roof is looking fairly decent at the moment. Also, this here, something looks off. Let me just try that. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better, a bit more rounded. But as you can see, we've used raw gold up here instead of the gold blocks we've been using down here. I think it just looks a bit better up that high by itself. Normal gold blocks look ugly when stacked together, in my opinion, because you've got these very obvious lines. Whereas this sort of blends together into one texture. There is no roof on this thing yet, but that's because I I've got something planned for that. For now, though, I think it's time we started working with this diorite. And these are the blocks I've chosen to blend it together. But what does the AI think? I thought my blocks are pretty good, but it suggested using cobblestone and then on top of that, andesite? So I thought that's terrible. So I changed my question to what blends well with diorite and calcite, trying to find a mix of the two. And it said andesite once again, then quartz blocks, then stone bricks, then glass blocks, which is just clear glass, oak or birch wood, and then sea lanterns? What on earth is this blooming AI on? That sounds horrible. Let me just try it quickly. Genuinely no idea how these are all meant to work together. I'm gonna try it on the house anyway. It's gonna look awful, but I'm gonna try it. And as predicted, it looked pretty hideous because of the planks, the sea lanterns, and the quartz. But I see some potential here. Right, so the sea lanterns. Let's talk about the sea. Let's not talk about the sea lanterns. They are so bad. The birch planks. Oh my gosh, they're so hideous. Oh, but the AI suggested it, so I feel like I should do it. But not the sea lanterns. I'm sorry. I couldn't fit the glass in either. There's just not a chance. You could texture with glass. It makes no sense. Let's instead change the sea lanterns to white concrete powder. We'll change the quartz blocks to smooth quartz and the birch planks to light gray glazed terracotta that sort of blends a bit better now and actually looks pretty cool actually like kind of really cool let's let's change this up here though because i i'm not going for the stone brick up here there we go that's looking good now i'm liking these colors i actually switched around the calcite and the smooth quartz by the way i think it looks much more smooth now Time to add those two blocks windows and some detail to this thing. Hope it looks good. Now this is where the build starts to come to life by adding in all this different detail using some trap doors, some leaves and all sorts of different things. We're using our glass as well, using some lime, some green and some yellow and it all comes together to make this build look very nice. And we also added the tower here which has a bell in it. And there you go, that's looking pretty fantasy, isn't it? But before we get working on the interior, I want to add some trees around and terraform this a bit. But what type of tree should I add? Let's ask the AI. The AI gave me a list of five different trees, giant redwoods, cherry blossoms, mushroom trees, weeping willows, and enchanted trees, which was very nice of it. But I asked once again, can it pick one for me? And it chose giant redwoods. And I don't think I've ever built giant redwoods before. I don't really know what they are. So I did some Googling for inspiration. 
let's try and build some in game. So I designed two redwood trees, one really big boy and one that's only slightly a really big boy. They're still big though. And then I got pasting them around the area with some world edit, rotating them as well so they look slightly different and altering the bottoms. We also added in some podzil and some coarse dirt plus some moss plus some mossy stone and some other stuff. Alrighty, I'm pretty happy with this exterior with the trees now as well. I like it. Now we have to work on the dreaded interior. Oh. And the AI actually listed which rooms we best. So we got ground floor, main living area, first floor, bedroom, second floor, recreational and storage. So let's first start by just sorting out the layout. And in we go. As you can see, we've just added rooms so far. No decoration. But here we've got a little room which I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do with. Same with this one here. Very small. Don't know if we can really put anything in there. Round the side here, there we've got an enchanting room maybe. And this is where we're going to have our sort of like furnaces and main crafting area. Upstairs, we have two bedrooms. One here and one in here as well. And then finally, we've got a little spiral staircase through the tower up to the top floor, which we'll use as just general storage. Time to decorate with loads of small little time lapses. Starting with the enchanting room, which as you can see has an enchanting table in it and some bookshelves. Then we have the main crafting area, which has got crafting stuff in it, furnaces and some other stuff. The bedroom upstairs has, you guessed it, a bed in it, plus a wardrobe and some other stuff. Then the smaller bedroom has some beds in it, more beds in fact. And finally, the storage room upstairs has lots of storage in it. And with that, our magical house is complete. Let's have one final tour as there was a couple of rooms I didn't show in that time lapse but here you can see the main area here we got some meat cooking up there well not really but it's more just to store it lots of like storage chests but it wanted me to put the main storage upstairs so I did that the enchanting room looking quite enchanting if I do say so and yes and yes, you can get 30 levels if you want. Sweeping edge, looting free. Blech. The other downstairs room has a map in it. A map of our area, as you can see, all these custom trees and a couple of floating weird stuff around. And the other room has a snowman. Why? That's the question. Upstairs, we have the master bedroom, which is very cozy and has this very nice wardrobe system as well, which I do quite like. This is the kid's bedroom or the cool person's bedroom because bunk beds are cool. Uh, lots of people can sleep in this house, a total of six. And then finally up the spiral staircase, of course, the chest room, which is a very awkward place of a chest room and I couldn't really stack chests because, you know, you can't open them. So very awkward. But hey, someone might use it. But there you have it, the house. And let's wrap up this video with a cheeky shaders transformation as well. Ooh, looks pretty good. But I think it looks just as good normally. Anyway, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like.